Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. We've got it here, the Amazon $71.49 draft booster box of Adventures in Forgotten Realms. Let's crack this thing open and see if we can 2x, 3x our money, or at least even get our money back. So we've got 36 uh, draft booster packs to go through. There are still, uh, still one common valued over a dollar, that's our deadly dispute. And then there's four uncommons valued over a dollar in this set. Uh, and then quite a few value in, in the other categories as well. I think there's close to 60 cards. So we'll go through the pack one time. Um, and then we'll just focus on the rares and the mythics. And I'll uh, highlight any additional value later on. So we got a Spiked Pit Trap, an Earth Cult Elemental, Shambling Ghast, uh, got a Ranger, Planner Ally, Bar the Gate, Brazen Dwarf, Fate's Reversal, Valor Stinger, uh, Frost Giant, Dragon's Disciple, Skullport Merchant, You Meet in a Tavern, and then our rare is going to be Long Rest, Not High Value, followed by a Swamp, and a Double Sided Skeleton Token. All right, so let's try and zip through these. All right, there's our Deadly Dispute. All right, we got ourselves a Blue Dragon and then a Borderless Adult Gold Dragon coming in here. Very cool to see this from the main set, especially in a draft booster box. Then we got an Island and a non-token token. As someone pointed it out in the comments, I have such disdain for the non-token non tokens. They could easily have just put any other piece of cardboard there. All right, then we got the Archfiend coming in from black, then a mountain, and a goblin in the back. Boots of Speed, Dragon Fire, got some rope. Oh, almost missed the rare. Uh, there we go. Xanathar, a guide, or excuse me, Guild Kingpin coming in. Mythic. Um, value just over two dollars. Then we got a swamp and a treasure. All right, kicking the door. Got a mace. Oh, gonna see a foil. <laughs> it's a forest, though. All right, and then we get a land layer of the Hydra coming in. Very nice to see that. Then the double forest, two different ones. Another non-token token in the back there. Another deadly dispute. There's a rogue class coming in. Decent hit, then a planes and a Vecna token. So the uncommons we'd be looking for would be the Cleric class, the Portable Hole, the Wizard class, or the Prosperous Innkeeper. So I'm trying to keep an eye out for those. There's the Wizard class. So that's just valued over a dollar. And then we get an Ithalid Scholar coming in from blue. And an Island and a Lost Mine. Really looking for Gnawbone in this box. White Dragon. And we got an Orc Jelly. Followed by a Gargoyle. And nothing much else. Does anyone absolutely love Adventures in Forgotten Realms? If so, let me know in the comments. Another Wizard of Class. Then Circle of Dreams Druid. Decent hit. Secret Door. And a Fairy Dragon in the back. Now I'm going to try and do something a little different in the overlay. Let me know if you all like it. Hate it. Looking for feedback. There's a Cleric Class. And then Drizzet Du Erden coming in here in uh, from the multicolor island and Guinevere. Fun fact: the Druid, the Drizzet Du Erden is one of the most valuable art cards in all of the art series of Magic: The Gathering. I don't know why, but it is. It's valued over twenty dollars. All 
All right, got a red dragon. And then we got ourselves a hand of Vecna. And a planes and a treasure. All right, finishing off stack number one. Another cleric class, another fly, and we're going to get a book of vile darkness along with a foil archfiend rare. All right, so that's stack one. You know, so we only needed about, uh, you know, $22 for each one of these stacks in return value. I think we definitely got that in stack one. All right, Hive of the Eye Tyrant coming in. And then Basilisk and a Mountain. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and stack those up, slide them on over. See a guard. Black Dragon. And our rare is an Icing Death Frost Tyrant. Uh, actually, a Mythic. Um, decent hit, just at a buck. Then we got a Wolf. As I almost drop packs. Gelatinous Cube. Then a Forest. Another foil in the back there. Don't think it's anything too exciting. Uh, we get a Wantai Malison coming in here, not high value, with an apprentice and a dungeon. I don't know, in my opinion, I think the dungeon mechanic was a pretty neat add on. Um, unfortunately, in Boulder's Gate, uh, they just didn't really continue it. There's one dungeon. But they kind of just half half went in. Ooh, what do we got here? Ah. Inferno of Star Mounts Mythic coming in here. Very decent hit here. So that's our second borderless in this draft box. And then we get a foil instrument of bards, followed by planes and a treasure. Very cool. So far, so good on this box for being a draft box at only $70. Unfortunately, Amazon kind of cut the sale short. I don't think it had anything to do with uh, us going out there and purchasing. I think they were just low on supply. All right, so we get Volo Guide to Monsters in Showcase, and then a Swamp and a non-token token. Trider, Ingenious Smith. Hunter's Mark, and then we get ourselves a Wish, and then a Forest. Not much up front here. Green Dragon, Hulking Bugabear, and Delina, Wild Mage coming in from red. Uh, does hold some value. And then a nice foil pixie guide, mountain, and a dungeon. All right, boots of speed. Drider, Ingenious Smith, Hunter's Mark. And we get ourselves a Demi Lich coming in here. Um, very cool artwork. Unfortunately, the, the card just isn't valued that much. Uh, has kind of a high casting cost of four. All blue. But the extended art version of that is just uh, it's just breathtaking. I don't think we'll see it, though. We've already gotten two in this box. There's a Warlock class, Magic Mirror, Sorcerer, and a Monk class coming in. With a Swamp and a Treasure token. Right, We've got the Atropole in the back. These cards aren't as glossy as some of the more recent sets that have been printed uh, overseas, so they're a little rougher to slide. 
Got a Rust Marcher, or Monster, and then a Guardian of Faith. Decent hit. With a Forest and a Tomb. All right, last pack in stack two. Thieves Tools. Evolving Wilds. All right, another Sorcerer. And we get a Silvery Moon Ranger coming in here as our rare with a Demon Fang Knoll in foil and a Plains and a Wolf. All right, moving on to the last stack, last 12 packs. All right, there's our Prosperous Innkeeper coming in just over a buck. Good staple card. Then we got Oswald Fiddle, Fiddle Banger uh, coming in here from Showcase. And then a Forest and a Lost Mine. So hopefully this is a good uh, distraction from uh, Dominary United. I wanted to take a little break. Don't worry, we'll get back to it tomorrow. I just figure uh, since uh, I called out the sale, I made the purchase. I wanted to show you all what $71 gets you. Inclusive Painter, the Priest. All right, another land here. We got a Dungeon Descent, followed by a Plains and a non token token. Paladin Shield, Devoted Paladin, lots of Paladin action. Pair of Goblins, another Prosperous Innkeeper. And then we get Orcus, Prince of Undeath, coming in. The Swamp and a Tomb. So, still haven't seen Tiamat. We haven't seen uh, Lola. Uh, and certainly no, no Gnawbone as of yet. So, hopefully this is not a break-even box, especially at $71. All right, we got another Mythic here, Flame Skull. With a Swamp and Wolf. Secret door. Man, these things are just sticking together. Pegasus, Bag of Holding, Cleric, Feywild Trickster, and the Black Staff of Waterdeep as our rare with a swamp and a dungeon in the back. A Jin, a Unicorn, a Stinger, Gargoyle, Moon Dancer. Very, uh, very playable card. And then a Hobgoblin uh, Bandit Lord with an island and another dungeon. Right, Paladin. Prowler. Rogue. Barbarian class. And a Bard class coming in as our rare. That's what I want. I want the Spider Queen. All right, butchered the pack. There we go. All right. Oh my God, do we get another borderless? That's three borderless in a draft box. That is, and another deadly dispute. That's almost unheard of. And it will be, oh, it's a black dragon. Okay, so it's an uncommon borderless. But still, that's three borderless cards in a draft box. Pretty unheard of. Iron Golem, Hulking Bugabear. And a rare is a duplicate gelatinous cube. Then we got some rope and a mountain in the back. All right, four packs to go. All right, Monk of Open Hand, Barbarian Class, and then a Frogmith as our rare. I don't believe we've seen any card valued over $10, so this is going to be kind of a what I call a a bulk box. So basically, you're just kind of getting the uh, the one to five dollar cards. There's a portable hole, right? A lot of consistent value, but not uh, high value. So no lottery hits. Then we got a Hall of Storm Giants. It's definitely a land box and a clever conjurer and a forest in the back. I don't know if we've hit the entire land cycle, but we've definitely hit a lot of them. All right, Death's Whisper, Loathsome Troll, 
and a sphere of annihilation as our rare with a yuletide fang blade as a foil and a swamp in another dungeon last pack all right kick in the door you see a guard approach contact the other plane uh, fireball vampire spawn bull strength veteran dungeoner you come to a river jade cell sword bulet wandering troubadour another portable hole goblin morning star and Atasha's Hideous Laughter. Decent hit to go out on, but not over $10, with an island and a non-token token. Now let's jump into the MTG box analysis. Let's start with a look at the Adventures in Forgotten Realms set and establish what was possible to see in a draft booster pack. This set contains a total of 395 cards. Draft booster packs can only see cards numbered 1 through 358, which means you can't see any of the extended art cards. Those are reserved for the more expensive collector booster packs. We can, however, see all the cards from the main set, as well as all the borderless and showcase cards, as well as the nine specially created dungeon module cards for this set. This chart shows the foils that we saw in orange, the non-foils in green, and the set in gray as our baseline. This box contained between 82 and 88 non-foil cards from each of the five primary colors of magic, and the box contained three borderless cards, which, based on my recollection, is a pretty unheard of for a box from 2021. In the foil space, we saw 12 cards. The only color not showing up was red. All other colors were represented with between one and three cards each. From a coverage perspective, we saw 240 unique non-foil cards, which accounts for 67% of the cards we were eligible to see. In the blue, black, and green categories, we saw 79% of all the cards in the set. In the foil space, we only covered about 3% of the set, which is about average for a draft booster box from 2021. Now let's take a look at coverage by rarity. In the draft booster box of AFR, we can see 118 commons, 104 uncommons, 83 rares, and 33 mythics. In the non-foil space, we saw 97% of the commons, 67% of the uncommons, 35% of the rares, and 18% of the mythics. In the foil space, we didn't hit any mythics, but we did see two rares, four uncommons, five commons, and two basic lands. Being a draft booster box, duplication is not only going to happen, but it should be expected. In this box, none of the foils were duplicated, but 156 of the non-foils were repeated 288 times, giving this box a 53% duplication rate. Now let's talk about the potential value of the AFR set as it pertains to the draft booster box. This chart shows the 358 cards were eligible to see by dollar category in their non-foil prices. As you can see, the set contains seven cards currently valued over $10. These include two different variants of Tiamat, two variants of Den of Bugabear, two variants of Old Gnawbone, and one borderless Lolith the Spider Queen. There's also six cards valued over $5 and 45 cards valued between $1 and $5. The remaining 300 cards in the set are valued under a buck. In total, 358 cards that we're eligible to see have a combined value of $331.44. Now let's take a look at the value that we saw in this box starting off in the non-foil space. This box didn't contain any of the seven cards valued over $10 and just one of the six cards valued over $5. And that was the borderless Inferno of Star Mounts valued at $6.54. This box also contained 21 cards valued over a dollar, but the remaining 506 non-foils in the box were all valued less than a buck. So how did this box perform? Well, I purchased this box from Amazon while it was on sale for $71.41, not including tax. Today we opened 36 packs with 15 cards each, seeing a total of 540 cards. The 32 tokens had a combined value of $5.74. In the foil space, we saw just $2.25 from our 12 low-value cards. The remaining 528 non-foils in the box have a total value of $93.66. This brought the grand total for the box up to $101.65, which means that this box was a gain of $30.24. However, if I had paid the going rate of $100 a box, this would have been an extremely sad ending. 
Now, for those interested in cards valued just over $2, the numbers look like this. In total, we saw 12 cards valued over $2 for a combined total of $42.83. If you were able to catch this sale on Amazon last week, drop me a comment and let me know what you pulled, because I left plenty of good cards out there. Until next time, do something amazing.